St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is the estate of Margaret Cecilia Whitehead, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, in memory of Margaret. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The second is Kathy Yanni from Grand Prairie, Alberta, in memory of the deceased members of her family, in thanksgiving for the televised Mass and for special intentions. Our thanks to Kathy Yanni in Grand Prairie and to the estate of Margaret Cecilia Whitehead for making the broadcast of this Mass possible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of God, the love of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we begin our celebration, let us recall that we are in the presence of the risen Christ, and that we do need his continuing mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, protect us from all harm. Give us freedom of spirit and health in mind and body to do your work on earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sarah. I will now call to mind the works of the Lord and will declare that I have seen by the word of the Lord his works are made and all his creatures do his will. The sun looks down on everything with its light and the work of the Lord full of his glory. The Lord has not empowered even his holy ones to recount all his marvelous works, which the Lord the Almighty has established, so that the universe may stand firm in his glory. He searches out the abyss and the human heart. He understands their innermost secrets, for the Most High knows all that may be known. He sees the signs of the age. He discloses what has been and what is to be, and he reveals the traces of hidden things. No thought escapes him, and nothing is hidden from him. He has set in order the splendors of his wisdom. He is from all eternity one and the same. Nothing can be added or taken away, and he needs no one to be his counselor. How desirable are all his works, and how sparkling they are to see. All these things live and remain forever. Its creature is preserved to meet a particular need. All things come in pairs, one opposite the other, and he has made nothing incomplete. It supplements the virtues of the other. Who could ever tire of seeing his glory? The word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in and justice 
The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the man who was blind, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, Bartimaeus regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two dimensions or aspects to the biblical understanding of God and of God's relationship to us. One has to do with the world or the cosmos and the other with human history. Both the opening pages of the Bible and the first line of the great Christian creeds proclaim God as the creator. Everything that is, they declare, has come from and depends on him. As fundamental as this truth is, however, the emphasis in much of the Bible is less on God's work of creation and more on his continuing involvement with humanity, and especially with the people that he chooses to be an instrument of his revelation and a special object of his redemptive and liberating activity, the people of Israel. For Christians, God's saving and healing presence in human history reaches a climax and takes on a definitive form in the life and destiny of Jesus. The promises made to Abraham, the covenant sealed with Israel through Moses, the hopes and longings of the prophets are all understood by Christians to point forward to Jesus and to the reconciliation and new life that is offered us through his death and resurrection. God's sustaining and guiding presence to history, to our history, has not ceased. We continue to experience it in our own lives and in the life of the world, and we look forward in faith to its fulfillment in eternal life. Today's reading from Sirach is typical of many of the writings that we find in the wisdom tradition. 
Unlike many of the other parts of the Bible, this section appeals somewhat less to Israel's history and God's involvement in it, and somewhat more to the world as a product and reflection of his creative activity. Sirach's intent in today's reading is to draw our attention to the world around us and to remind us that it was through God's word that it and everything in it were made. He recalls and praises God's power and wisdom. Nothing, he says, escapes God's understanding. Nothing is hidden from him. The passage mentions the glory of God. The words suggest the beauty and radiance of God, especially as these are manifested outwardly in his works. When we speak of giving glory to God, what we mean above all is recognizing the glory that belongs to him as God and to the best of our ability, trying to pay him honor, trying to offer him the worship and praise that are his due. For Sirach, God's glory is reflected in creation. Although the Bible speaks of human beings as being made in God's image and likeness, it also affirms that the world itself and everything in it reflects something of him. The work of the Lord, Sirach declares, is full of his glory. Contemplating the beauty and power, the vastness and variety, the complexity and simplicity of nature and the cosmos, Sirach asks, who could ever tire of seeing such things and fail to recognize in them a reflection of the glory of God? Today's responsorial psalm picks up the same theme when it declares that by the word of the Lord the heavens were made and all the host by the breath of his mouth. Gazing in awe at the world and recognizing it as having come from God, the psalmist invites us to join with him in a song of praise and thanksgiving. Today's gospel speaks not of God's creative activity, but of his continuing involvement in human life. The blindness of Bartimaeus symbolizes the brokenness of creation and of our struggles and longings to have it healed. Having heard of Jesus and of the people that he has already helped, the blind man is seized by a deep desire to be freed of his blindness. He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When asked what he wants, his answer is as simple and direct as it is heartfelt. My teacher, he says, let me see again. Jesus declares that the cure that takes place is due to the man's faith, his faith in God and in Jesus as the instrument of God's healing presence. The way the story is told suggests that the blindness of Bartimaeus is not only physical, or better, that the cure that he undergoes is intended to be understood by us as pointing to another kind of healing, one that we all, in different ways, stand in need of. Sirach, and with him many others in the biblical tradition, and since then, have looked out at the world and seen in it a reflection of the glory of God. They have recognized that it and everything that is part of it, including ourselves, are the work of his hands, freely, and out of a desire to share something of himself, God has created the earth and the sky, the sun and the moon, the cosmos, the vastness of which goes beyond anything we can imagine. As creatures endowed with mind and heart, we are called to recognize what he has done and to offer him praise and thanksgiving. Anyone who has ever genuinely discerned, however briefly, 
even a glimpse of the glory of God present in creation, understands that at the heart of our vocation as human beings is the privilege and the responsibility to give voice to the whole of created reality in thanking God for its existence and nature, its vitality and order, its goodness and beauty. Caught up in our everyday concerns and worries and distracted by the all but endless possibilities that are ours for entertainment and information, we rarely today take the time to stop and to look and to recognize that the world around us is indeed alive with the glory of God. In order to do so, we need to make our own the prayer of Bartimaeus. Lord, let me see again. Let me see your presence in my life and in the world. Let me see your glory reflected in the things that you have made. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will help us to see reflections of God's glory in our lives and in the life of the world around us. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have written or phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. For the peoples of North Africa and the Middle East, that their struggles for freedom and justice will bear fruit, let us pray to the Lord. For the Canadian military serving in Afghanistan and for the people of that war-torn nation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. With them, England. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God of mercy, in this Eucharist, we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept the gifts we present and help us to follow him with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You have no need of our praise, yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Our prayer of thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but makes us grow in your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory and honor are his as heaven and earth, angels and archangels cry out in unending praise.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. We are faithful, Lord, to your command. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Using now the words which Jesus himself taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and in your mercy grant us peace in our day. Keep us free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us give to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Have mercy.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in a morning offering? O Jesus, I come before you at the beginning of this day. I gaze at your face. I look upon your side, pierced by the lance. Your wounded heart speaks to me of God's love poured out for us. Take, Lord, and receive my heart, the words of faith that I speak, the works of justice that I would do, my joys and sufferings. When I come to the Eucharistic table, gather my offerings to your own for the life of the world. At the end of the day, place me with Mary, your mother, and for her sake, take me to your heart. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the nourishment you give us through your holy gift. Pour out your spirit upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us single-minded in your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to two donors, the first is the estate of Margaret Cecilia Whitehead, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. The second is Kathy Yaney from Grand Prairie, Alberta. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10, so if you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C to M6. Salvation.